Hello, everyone. My name is Kid Lee, and welcome back to E3 2017. This is going to be the PC Gaming Show. This one's always interesting, assuming that they are going to stick with the uh, same theme. It's actually a fairly new show. They've only done it two years, and Day9 has hosted it, and I believe he's going to host it again this year as well. If you're familiar with the late night talk shows like your Jimmy Fallon and whatnot, this show is kind of done like those where he actually has like a desk and he brings people in and out and he interviews them and stuff. And so this one is this one's different than than the other conferences should be starting here in just a couple of minutes. I normally like to do some predictions on the shows that are coming up, but for this one, I, I really can't. Since it's not actually with a particular company, they have shown just completely new stuff every year. So I've got the uh, Twitch feed up. It looks like they're actually talking about God of War a little bit. There's going to be a lot of pe the there's a lot of people out there who uh, are in that other camp. Like I don't want it to ruin the first one. How does it ruin the first one though? That's what I ask. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand either. And then, you know, like, Sony is is pretty good at usually, like, having something I had to mute my mic for a second there. Mm -hmm. Our like, town is testing that. the sirens for mm -hmm. some reason. A little, Terrible a little time Columbo, for them to like, be doing that. One more thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, right? They've, they've... All right, I'll go ahead and I'll turn that back down. But, yeah, God of War, that was shown at uh, Sony last year. It was actually the event they uh, opened up with, which was really, really cool. It's going to be interesting to see if Sony can actually pull it off again this year. They usually talk a lot about AMD. Yep, you're absolutely right. I, I don't know if AMD is actually sponsoring it this year or not. For, for some reason, I thought I heard that uh, Intel was, but I could be wrong. You're installing an AC unit right now? But yeah, overall, I think uh, Day9 is a pretty good host for this. And I want to say that also the last two years that this show has run long, last year in particular, it actually ran right into the Ubisoft press conference, and they actually had to cut this one short, and they switched it over to Ubisoft. Oh, they're actually showing NAC 2 right now. I, I don't know how well that first game did. Surprised they actually wanted to make a sequel out of it. One other quick thing, uh, once the event actually starts, I want to make sure that my volume is synced up level-wise with the uh, PC Gaming Show, so if you guys can help me. Just, just let me know if I need to turn the PC gaming show up or down so we can get that nice mix going. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, here on the couch, if you don't know these guys, we've got DJ Wheat, who's in the green coat. We've got Zeke, who's in the purple Twitch shirt. And then John Carnage is on the end in the black blazer. And actually, they just display their names right after I said it. You cheated me, Twitch. You cheated me. I've actually got my old school Twitch E3 shirt. This is from 2005 on. Uh, we're actually about a minute away, so let's go ahead and pop on the uh, volume again here and see what these guys are saying. <laughs> Sony pictures. They right can bring back shark. that brand so Stoker's Dracula. Shark back, I would probably, um, you know, and we will go full screen once it gets thing, going. I'll explode. All right, it sounds like they are ready oh. for the PC gaming show. So uh, we'll see you once it's over with coverage all day as long as right, let's go full screen. Ubisoft and Sony once again, today. let me know so on the volume levels. On, on Twitch, this is the PC gaming show. PC gaming press conference. Presence for a show full of announcements, new gameplay footage, and all things PC gaming. I've been your Quizmaster, Tom Marks. Be sure to stick around because you won't want to miss it. Quizmaster, huh? Sounds fishy. Oh, it is powered by Intel this year.
Well, there you go. Why do we call it the personal computer? Well, it's not just a box or a station, right? Your PC doesn't exist without you. And you don't just use your PC, you're its keeper. You're responsible for it. It's basically PC my child. Get their hands dirty. We turn the screws, we clean the fans, we thread the cables. It's got your fingerprints on it, and that has a special kind of pride. We build our PCs, and through them, we build friendships. I actually need to get a can of air and blow mine out this weekend. We build communities and our reflexes. I'm down! <laughs> we write stories, we make mods, because we get to decide what experience we want. Get the hell out of my face. Jeez, kicking that guy. God bless you, modders. PCs are scaffolding for our imaginations. That's what PC gaming means to us, to build and to give back to your hobby as much as it gives to you. Give me that fake this apple child. This is the PC Gaming Show 2017. Ladies. There and he is. Gentlemen, boys and girls and lovers Stage is actually better than what it was this last couple of years. Is the PC Gaming Show sponsored by Intel? How are you all doing this fine morning? Ah yes. You're doing woo. That's excellent. <laughs> I'm your host, Sean Day Nine. We're doing if you woo. Have never been to this How's show before. Guys? It's simple. We have a slew of incredible guests who are going to talk about all their upcoming games, one after the other. So I'd like to warmly welcome all of you for coming out to the beautiful Ace Hotel Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Twitch chat, it's a pleasure to have you here. I know that you're currently being productive and constructive in chat <laughs> right now. <laughs> Now, if you're interested in watching in another language, over at PCGamingShow.com, we have German, Spanish, Russian, Chinese. Feel free to head there or stay right here for English coverage. And without any further ado, let's find out what's happening this year at the PC Gaming Show. I think this it's is the PC Gaming Show. I think it's show. their feed. Let right me uh, the theater at Ace Hotel in downtown Los yeah, Angeles, we California. Coming keep an eye on it. Intel explores the future of PC gaming. New announcements from Xbox. Jordan Weissman, the creator of Mech Warrior, gives a first ever look at Battletech's campaign. New footage for Middle Earth Shadow of War. A new game from Play Entertainment. New gameplay from Total War Warhammer 2. New announcements for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. An exciting reveal from Tripwire Interactive. And plenty more. Now, once again, Sean Plot. Thank you so much, evil omnipotent voice in the sky. Let's talk about our very first game. It is an expansion to the legendary and infamous turn-based strategy game, XCOM 2. Let's take a look. All right. This was rumored that XCOM might actually be showing something today. You're not supposed to be here. What are you, Klingons? Oh, if only you knew the truth. There I still need to beat the second one. Groups that we consider a legitimate threat to Advent. Together, they'd make one hell of a fighting force. Too bad they hate each other. So, you do exist. They were sent here to purge the lost. You are safe here. The aliens turned into zombies. Steal your souls. You must understand. I have no choice. It's kind of 
kind of looks like That's Destiny, good. the XCOM version. Advent, Muhammad. I suppose we should begin then. Now the real war begins. War of the Chosen. me to talk about XCOM 2 War of the Chosen is the creative director of XCOM 2 over at Firaxis, Jake Solomon. Pleasure to have you here today. This is very exciting. We finally get to talk about this. So yes, I'm very pumped. Thank you for having us. Well then tell us what is War of the Chosen all about? Well, so the goal with this game really was to make something massive. So we added a ton of new enemies, lots of new soldier classes, new environments, story, strategy systems, just tons of new toys for players to engage with. And I understand that it's an expansion that's even larger than any of the ones you've done previously. Yeah, e easily twice the size of the previous XCOM expansion. Really? It is, All it right. is massive. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the content that's in there. Who yeah. are the Chosen? The Chosen, right. You saw them. They starred in the trailer. So they were designed to be the ultimate enemies of XCOM. They are three almost uh, champions of the alien army. Um, and they have three very distinct personalities and three very distinct fighting styles. And the player is going to get to know those very well because over the course of a whole game, they're going to fight each of those chosen multiple times. And the chosen, just like the player, uh, they get stronger over the course of the game. They learn new skills, new abilities. They even gain new procedural strengths that the player is going to have to contend with. So in a sense, it's not like a normal enemy where you might see a Chosen in one battle and a Chosen in the next. It will be the same Chosen again and again and again getting new strengths. That's right. That's right. And so you just they, they always have something new up their sleeve because they're always learning sort of new tricks. Well, you mentioned the personalities of the different Chosen. Yeah. Walk me through who the Chosen are and what these strengths and weaknesses might be. Yeah, so for example, there's the Assassin, and she, her personality is, is tied up in duty and honor. She feels very Isn't honor one of the bad guy races masters, in Destiny called the Chosen? And she does that, of course, by hunting down XCOM and, and killing soldiers, you know. <laughs> um, A natural and, expression of identity. We're bringing back some familiar elements from earlier games, yes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but combat-wise, she's a mix of stealth and close quarters combat, so she can vanish from sight, and she uses that to get in close on the soldiers and use her blade. So, like the other Chosen, she's very powerful, and she has a, a sort of unique fighting style that the player hasn't seen before. And we've talked about this new obstacle in the form of the Chosen. You know, I mentioned the Assassin. Who are the right. other two? There's the Hunter. That's more of a long-range sniper. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Warlock, which is, you know, a Warlock. So, <laughs> so yeah, Ed, Ed, he, doesn't he look like XCOM a warlock? So, yeah, they, they all have very unique skill sets, and so it's I am fun to, to, to fight each of them. What about the new tools that players have in order to try to overcome this obstacle of the Chosen? Yes, so as you saw in the trailer, um, XCOM is not the only resistance movement on Earth. So in, in War of the Chosen, you have these three factions out there. And like the, yeah. like the Chosen, they all have distinct philosophies and distinct uh, fighting styles. But for the player to get access to those, first they have to win those factions over. They have to I recruit see. them to the XCOM cause. But when you do, you have access to the three the most powerful soldiers we've ever created. So and we're taking a look at the Reaper right now. What's the that, gameplay that's of the Reaper? Right, the Reapers. So they are sort of uh, stealth marksmen and saboteurs. Uh, then we have the skirmishers, and I'm from which the division. are actually defectors from the alien army. Oh, that makes sense with the art style. Yeah, right. yeah. Look at those fingers. Yeah, so they're... <laughs> Half alien uh, human hybrids, and they're sort of like single soldier wrecking crews. They're really powerful. And then we have the Templars, and they're the most mysterious of the factions. They are psionic wildlings, and they work a little differently because blade from Halo. they build up power over multiple attacks that yeah. they can then unleash in more devastating abilities. So it's sort of like a mini resource management mechanic specifically for the Templars. It definitely is. There's trade offs there where as they gain focus, you either want to keep it because it makes them stronger, or mm -hmm. you can spend it on these really powerful abilities. Now, in the trailer, we got the chance to briefly look at the Lost. And though we didn't see them too right. much, I wanted to get the chance for you to talk about them a little more now. Who are they? Right. So the Lost, the, this, this comes out of the idea that the original alien invasion happened 20 yeah. years ago. And in that invasion, the aliens destroyed some of the greatest cities of the world, and, and we've never been back. So in War of the Chosen, we go back. And what you find there are the lost, um, these handsome... I thought that everyone in the cities died, but apparently they're alive and well, they're yeah, doing fine. Yeah, as you can see, they've, they've weathered the last 20 years really well. So 
Um, yeah, these are heavily mutated humans, and, and a single loss is not going to pose much of a challenge. Sure. Um, but unfortunately, you don't fight single loss. They move in large swarms, and so when you go into the cities, mm -hmm. these swarms are drawn to the sound of combat, and they never stop ah. coming. And there is a silver lining, which is that the lost don't like aliens either. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So once the lost show up, then everybody's fighting for their lives. So basically, the zombies the attack everyone. The XCOM games is the but with sort it being turn-based combat, I wonder how quickly you can actually you're kill planning, them. It's planning right. too, but the lost behave quite differently. Yeah, they're mindless. So the idea is that you have this tactical combat going on against you versus the advent, the aliens, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this horde shows up and it, it throws everybody's plans out of whack. And then you can even have maps where they are chosen, lost, you're fighting the advent at the same time. <laughs> it makes for some very, very beautiful chaos. It's, it is definitely unlike any other XCOM uh, missions you've played. Well, Jake, you're the first guest out, so I'm going to ask you the big question. Okay. When do we get to play it? We get to play this. War of the Chosen comes out August 29th, so very soon. Just two soon. months. That's right, very soon on PC, and it Xbox comes out One, and today. PS4. So people should Not. follow XCOM on Twitter and Facebook if Nobody's they done want that to yet. keep up with all the latest XCOM information. And Jake didn't want to do this, but I'm going to make him do it. Follow Jake on Twitter. It's at Solomon Jake. Follow him, say hello, and tell him you're proud to be a follower. Yes, yes, please, please. Thank you. I, <laughs> I don't like self-promotion. I, uh, Don't worry, I got you covered. I at Jake Sean Solomon. For that. Thank you. It's at Jake Solomon. At Jake Solomon. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining me today. Jake Solomon, creative director of XCOM 2. Thank you. Thanks. Now, as some of you may know, I am not the only host at this event. Joining me to do all sorts of announcement goodies is a woman named Sonia Reed, but you may know her a little better as OMG, it's Firefox. How's it going, Sonia? Hi. Thank you, Sean, and hello, you beautiful gamers. And whether you are checking us out online, I'm going to very quickly refresh today, the stream to see to if I can uh, show you guys some get it working awesome just a little bit better. And you know what? One I'm second. not going to wait. We're just going to get right into it. I want to show you a game called Ooblets. It is going to be coming out early next Ooblets. year. Ooblets. Come on. Time. Right. But even cuter, if you can imagine that. So I'm going to show you how to grow and customize your ooblets in this exclusive trailer. Why am I running 360? It's Viva Pinata. Now this trailer is kind of loud. So you've got like collecting and house building and all kinds of stuff and dancing apparently it's like the sims it's the sims with animal collecting game? What? That Ooblets trailer makes me oh so happy, and the previous one you just got the chance to see is the old school tabletop game Battletech, distilled into its purest form on PC, and here to talk about it from Harebrained Schemes is Jordan Wiseman and Mitch Gettleman. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you up on stage. Thank you very much. Woo! Yeah. 
Yes, that's the spirit. All right, I'm gonna oh, do something yeah. crazy for a second. I'm actually going to now, increase the quality based on BattleTech. Tell us about this to see what that does. By all means, BattleTech is a modern turn-based tactical game set within the Mech Warrior universe. And there's gonna be three modes of play: uh, a single-player skirmish, a multiplayer skirmish, and then our open-ended uh, mercenary campaign. I think that made it worse. Well, I want to hop straight into some of that single-player content by taking a journey to the Argo. I understand yeah, that, made it way that worse. All you know, right. there's all sorts of combat goodies that Didn't we're going to see in moments. Didn't have any of these issues the last couple days. In between missions. Walk us through what we're right, seeing Right, so here. the Argo is a uh, broken down hulk of a, space a spaceship from a bygone era, and it is your mercenary command center. You could take it all over the, uh, all over space, uh, going from star system to star system. Wait, I and missed. Taking, what is this uh, game called? This jobs looks interesting. From all sorts of different people, from uh, petty dictators all the way up to the great uh, lords and ladies of the noble houses. And uh, from there, you uh, can also command your entire mercenary crew. There's what is Mary. this? She's this looks. Your, Navigator, and you command her and all of your mech warriors as yeah. you take your jobs and upgrade your ship. I'm curious a little bit about the storyline in the single player. Sure. So you're going to see in a few moments uh, Lady Kamea Arano. She's uh, a deposed ruler. Uh, her, oh, this uh, was ba that battle tech game. Her uh, throne was right. taken by her uncle, and you are going to... Uh, jump in and help her regain her throne. Of course. It's been plunged, the whole space has been plunged into a bloody civil war. And, and, these, and these, of course, are the tools of, of, of uh, negotiation and diplomacy <laughs> um, uh, called battle mechs. Uh, and here in, in the mech bay, which is one of the, one of the key components of the Argo, you're able to customize uh, the mechs, adding different weapons, uh, changing out weapons and armor, heat sinks, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Yang here is, is uh, your master of ceremonies. He's uh, one of the key crew members because fixing these mechs after you come back from combat, you're a merc. You're, you're supposed to make right. money. Taking damage, you know, sets you behind. And so that, that's a really delicate balancing act. I can imagine that trying to get all the parts that you need for your ship can be a little difficult. Absolutely. That's why things like, uh, especially in this time in era uh, where parts are, are scarce, battlefield salvage is an important part of the game. Uh, and, and that also gets into, you know, like, when you take out a, take out an enemy, try to leave the parts you want. Yeah, yeah. you want to hit them just hard enough to take them down. There's Lady uh, Kamea Arano there, and she's going to be the person you work for uh, during the campaign. But, of course, when the campaign ends, uh, the single-player story ends, you can still play the open-ended campaign, traveling around doing whatever you want. And there are the battle maps. Yes, yeah. now we're going to get a chance to look at the combat itself. You're coming down from the Argo. You're descending into battle. Walk me through what we're seeing. By all means. So, so... Uh, Battletech full 3D environment, and, and like a modern tactical game, uh, the environment counts, right? Like line of sight, sensors, uh, cover, even though you're, you know, friggin' 30 foot tall, covered in armor, uh, hiding in a forest still helps. It soaks off damage. Interesting. Uh, so all those are kind of core components of any modern game. So especially it's facing, almost got elements of like really XCOM matters in Battletech, you know, uh, mixed in with like a 4X. Giant yeah. bags of hit points. Instead, they have 11 <laughs> different armor locations, there's internal structure, uh, they have uh, the internal components, these uh, critical slots filled with all sorts of uh, important pieces. So what you're trying to do is strip off the armor from one location and then keep your facing yeah. to try and penetrate it, get to the juicy bits. Yeah, I mean, I see this diagram at the top, it's reminiscent of the original tabletop yes, game, which indeed. I actually played as a kid, and I mean like... <laughs> as a kid, huh? Thanks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand the you know the same sort of idea where damaging the arm disables that weapon, but Absolutely. the mech can keep going. And you keep going at it, you blow that arm off, and they lose those weapons. Uh, and the and back is really juicy and tasty too. You you get around the back of a battle mech and penetrate. <laughs> yeah, I am highly interested in this. this I looks said that out. <laughs> We're alive, right? Okay. We'll allow well, it. We'll allow yeah, there it. There you go. What you just saw there is melee. I kind of um, want them to go back to the ship, and I want to look at that about. map I mean, view mechs again. Are not only yeah. weapon systems, they're giant, you know, armored suits, and so we're going up and, and being able to slug and kick and, and just, you know, even put a foot through a cockpit uh, or death from above, jump uh, jump up and slam down on mechs. All that stuff is supported in this game. And and you really want to manage your heat, yeah. too. You're walking, you know, these mechs, uh, the pilots are sitting on a giant uh, nuclear reactor, basically, and so you really want to watch your heat, uh, how much uh, yeah, like this your, guy here is your different weapons do, because if you shut mm -hmm. down in combat, you are uh, quite vulnerable. It's been really fascinating to watch a lot of the streams because I know you guys just went into beta. Where can the people here go to sign up to play? Why, Sean, they can go to <laughs> BattletechGame.com. That's BattletechGame.com. Come yeah. find us on BattletechGame.com. And if you're interested in a used mech, this is the guy to talk That's to. That's right. Become a backer. I wonder now if this is I'd Kickstarter. Now I'd like to state again.
BattleTechGame.com. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. Jordan, Mitch, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Pleasure. Cheers. Yeah, yeah that, that game looks interesting. Now, our very next game you may recognize from PC Games Past. To talk about it, we got Sonya in the mezzanine. Thank you, Sean. Our next game is to come to us from our friends at Tales World Entertainment, and they have been working on an awesome open-ended action medieval RPG game, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. We're going to check out the trailer for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Uh, this was shown last year. big army versus army battle and sieges and take down castles and all that kind of stuff. I want to say last year they actually showed more of the castle siege stuff. What they're showing here was sort of the open warfare. This is kind of, kind of different, kind of new. Some of this melee combat with a bunch of people around you kind of reminds me of For Honor a little bit, but I'm sure that this doesn't have near the advanced system that For Honor does. <laughs> I've got arrows in me. Yeah, Mountain Blade 2. Looks interesting. Always a pleasure to have Mountain Blade 2 here at the PC Gaming Show. Now, I know we've just gotten started and we've seen XCOM and Ooblets and Battletech. We would love to hear your thoughts. Use hashtag PC Gaming Show. Let us know what you think. We'll even put some of the tweets up here live. Not all of the tweets, because that would be a disaster. Some of you on Twitter really need to pull it <laughs> well, together. Well, this show is Either already way, be better than Bethesda and EA. Coming up next, we have the sequel. To Total War Warhammer 1, it's Total War Warhammer 2. I'm joined by Al Bickham from Now you're just Assembly. talking crazy. How you doing? How's it going, Al? Yeah, really good. Good to be here. So tell me, what is it that's been going on since your announcement a few months ago? Quite a lot, really. I mean, this is the we're, we're working on the, the second game in our trilogy. Um, it's going to be every bit as big as the first game, but we're layering on. We we're sort of doubling down on all the stuff that made the first game so fun, which is real diversification between the factions and a whole range of a whole range of new kind of gameplay extras in the campaign game as well. So four new factions set across four oh, new continents. There's four and a new, new factions, is there? Yep, yep, four new factions. I've, yeah, I've yeah. never played any of these games. There were two big ones games. we were talking about. No, well, we're focusing uh, on the, from the High Total Elves War and the Lizard Men at the moment. Yeah. Um, but there's the Dark Elves as well and another fourth race, which we have yet to announce. Oh, you tease. I know, terrible, isn't it? Well, Al, talk to us a little bit about the High Elves and the Lizard Men. Right, so... So they're both essentially working towards the same goal in the campaign game, which yes. is to heal the Great Vortex, which is a, a sort of unique feature of the campaign map, which ties the whole narrative of the game together. Right. But heal the Great even, Vortex. even those in the Warhammer world with the, same, with the same aims will inevitably come to blows at some point. So that's what, we're, um, that's what we'll be showing today. And we're going to be looking at what is called a quest battle between the High Elves and the Lizardmen. Walk us through a little bit of what we're about to see. OK, so this is um, we're about to show some footage from a quest battle for Krokgar, who's one of the legendary lords for the lizard men, and this is one of his quest battles, and it's the battle for the fallen gates. So you'll see the master lizard man forces trying to oust yeah. the high elves as they as they try and they're sort of meddling in an ancient power, power site of the um, of the lizard men. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm very excited to take a look. It's going to be it's some like, in-game footage explosion. from the battle of the fallen gates. You can start. Dinosaur battles. We shall 
ride our Velociraptors into battle against the Dragon Lord. And we shall use lasers and arrows. September 28th, Al. That's, yep. That is the first time I think we've got the chance to see that official release date. Yep, we're announcing that today. We're officially out on the 28th of September. So we're available for pre-orders now. We've got a, um, an early adopter bonus, which is a really significant um, sort of bunch of new content for Warhammer 1. It's a new, a new uh, awesome. race pack, in fact. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, and we're out this year. Well, I want to take a step back, and I want to have you talk a little bit about what it was that we just saw in the Battle of the Fallen Gates. Right, so as I mentioned, this I is a quest battle. This. this is the Lizardmen versus the High Elves. What did um, we just see? And this is what we've got playable here at E3 this week. Um, so you'll be able to take control of the Lizardmen in that battle and, and experience that immense diversity and all the crazy stuff that's going on in their army because they're, they're essentially an army of ancient spacefaring dinosaurs. Uh, and they, you know, well, that makes small sense. dinosaurs that ride big dinosaurs with Aztec space lasers. And it's, you know, it's, it's playing with Warhammer. It's just dinosaurs all the way down. All the way, all the I way. I the lasers were from, from the yeah. Egyptians, so, not the Aztecs. And, and Warhammer lets, you know, gives us these toys to play with, to make right. the game with. It's awesome. Well, backing out of the battle, I know that the campaign map in Total War Warhammer was a big hit. What's going on with the campaign level? In Warhammer 2. So in Warhammer 2, we've got a ton of new campaign features which lead you to kind of explore and discover and gain new abilities and that kind of stuff. And it's all based around um, a sort of overarching narrative. So all the races are in our intention right until the end. Um, but we're okay, also thanks for the, the sound launch, update. I will turn it down just a little bit. A free update for the game, which will bring the combined campaign map. Let's into try play, that. Which is the the, the, the landmass from Warhammer 1. Keep me updated, guys. To Warhammer 2 together in a gigantic campaign map where you can play any That's of the races awesome. that you own from both games, yeah. Well, I understand you have presence here at E3, not just in this uh -huh. show, but also on the floor. What are players going to get the chance to play there? Yep, so they can play the Battle of the Fallen Gates. We've got two difficulty yeah. modes, so a kind of starter difficulty mode and a, and a veteran's right. difficulty mode. And they'll also get to see, um, we're also rolling, when, when you play it, you'll, you'll see the actual campaign map as well. We've put a video together that details loads of the new features in the campaign map, so you can actually see that in action as well. So if you get a chance, go play. It's really good fun. Well, Al, I want to thank you for coming out and talking to us today My about pleasure. Total War Warhammer 2. Once again, feel free to check it out on the E3 floor, or if you're at home, there'll be tons of footage and updates about the Battle of the Fallen Gates. Now, our next game is in the card game genre, a genre where no matter how hard I try, I wind up playing bad decks and having fun. Hmm. Here to talk about the upcoming expansion for Shadowverse is Kriparian. Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to talk to you guys about Shadowverse. Shadowverse is one of the best card yeah, games the whole out there because card basically gaming just does market everything is a little right. saturated Every right now. Every time I log into Shadowverse, I have an amazing experience. I can play whatever deck type, whatever deck, whatever cards. Anything I want to do. And of course, this guy used every to be a top tier cards Hearthstone cards player the game, and he moved on. This whole thing gets forwarded and really the game gets so much richer. And with that, ladies There's and so gentlemen, many of them. It's hard to keep track. I give you the worldwide debut of the Wonderland Dreams trailer. I have a book for thee like no other. Each page a window to a long lost land where fairy tales dovetail with myths and wishes give birth to legends grand. Knights and dragons or wistful love. Shadowverse is better than Hearthstone. It doesn't really take Within much to get book, better than Hearthstone. Ambitions bloom. Like a lot but of card warned, games are better. My fickle friend. A dark abyss awaits us all. For blood pricked roses, wishes be. But fear not to bite life's fruit. For in this land, courage is key. With bated breath, the door sweeps open. Glory bound or purged in flame. 
The hand you choose defines your fate. So I ask you, is this really just a game? Wonderland Dreams. June 29th. Thank you, Psy Games, and thank you, Crip. As you know, technology is an extremely important component to games, especially with the ever-increasing power of hardware and with new demands coming from VR. Here to talk a little bit about tech in games is the leader of the software development group at Intel. It's Doug Fisher. Doug, come on out. Oh, here comes the uh, Intel-sponsored hey, section of the show. Hey, thanks for joining us, Doug. It's great to be here. I want to thank you, Doug, for coming out, and of course, thanks to Intel for sponsoring this event. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. And since Doug has a whole bunch of exciting Actually, stuff Actually, Intel say, just had a press conference. It was only like 20 minutes long. <laughs> hey, good morning, everyone. I am very excited to be here. And I'm very excited to talk to the PC gaming community about all the announcements we made this morning from Intel. I'm a software guy, you're the gamers. All these announcements are very relevant to everything we do. You know, 2016 was an amazing year by all measures in gaming. Look at the number of live streams in Twitch, over 2 million new live streams, over 300 million esports enthusiasts, and look at the growth in VR. 2017 is going to be even more amazing. And why? Because of you. It's because of you in this because room. Because Intel gamers. wants to it's get into VR esports. No, I'm not kidding. You are the I'm ones that bring the innovation that we create. You drive us to innovate. You were on the edge of technology all the time with you. You have that instinct on what the new capabilities are that we need to deliver. And then you have this amazing, inclusive, and social environment. Young, old, male, female, tech, non-tech. Millions of people getting together, inspiring each other to immerse themselves in this environment. Now, it starts at Intel with amazing hardware technology. We've talked about the launch we had two weeks ago of our X-Series platforms. Now, you gaming enthusiasts will love the Core i7X overclocking capability. It's an amazing what system. What about the i9? And you megatasters who want to game, create, stream, will love the beast of them all, the Core i9 Extreme Edition. Oh, there an it is. amazing system for this environment. Now, as a software person, I love this environment. I love this hardware because why? It gives yeah, software I just built like a brand new $2,500 box. Waiting, so I don't plan on building one creating, for a couple years. Creating that amazing content. I work with over a million gaming developers to ensure they take full advantage of all that innovation we put on our platforms. Whether it's working on the caching algorithms or the high density graphics or multi-core, it doesn't matter, all the different areas, the best known methods, we ensure these millions of developers are making the most out of that platform, delivering the best content. Then we work to market that so that all the gamers out here, the billions of gamers, know the new compelling content. There's billions of gamers available. now? And this is just an example of some of the titles we work with. I'm sure you recognize a lot of these titles. These are just a few examples, whether it's Halo Wars 2 or Overwatch or in the VR space, where it's Arizona Sunshine or The Unspoken. We're working with all these content providers to ensure they take Arizona full advantage of all those new Sunshine. capabilities. How many people have heard of Destiny? Nope, never heard of it. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. I couldn't be more excited <laughs> to tell you that we work with Bungie and Activision to bring Destiny 2 to the PC. That, yes, yes, we're bringing I have the PC, heard that the yes, PC version of Destiny 2 is really, really good. Runs a lot better. That experience is absolutely and amazing. And on the consoles. Ah. And I can't think of a better person to talk about how amazing that experience is than the full-time live Twitch streamer and YouTube broadcaster. Welcome on stage. Tefty Teft. Who? Hey, Tefty. Hey, Doug. How you doing? Good. Great to see you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. So you really do live, eat, breathe, sleep, dream Destiny. I do. I play a lot of Destiny. I've got thousands of hours, uh, hundreds of raids completions. I, I, I've built my community around Destiny on Twitch, and uh, I'm a co-host for uh, one of the founding co-hosts of Destiny Community Podcast, one of the biggest podcasts specifically for Destiny, so I, 
I know a lot about Destiny and I play a lot of it. That's great. And so when you play it, have you experienced it on the PC yet? I have, yeah. I got to play it at the event. I got to say, the, the PC experience is amazing. As, uh, as somebody who's played a lot of hours in Destiny, everybody knows how is it going to transfer, how is the, the experience going to go from console to, to PC, are they going to actually be able to deliver, and I can say 100%, 100% sure that the PC experience is incredible. When I got to play it, I was blown away. I popped Don Blade, using mouse and keyboard, and rain and fire from above. It was amazing. I just hope it gets released you guys, this year. if you're a fan of Destiny, you're going to love Destiny 2. That's awesome. Yeah. So, is anybody out here going to be able to participate and play with this? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's going to be on the it's uh, it's going to be on the show floor. The other thing too is they've got tons of PC support as well that's being added to it. So, 4K is going to be beautiful looking. It's got 21:9 ratio, uncapped frame rates. I mean, for me personally, I'm going to be looking at pushing 144 or higher for FPS because me oh, too. It's going to be so nice. <laughs> and yes, absolutely. On top of that, uh, Bungie has told me something specific uh -oh. that is exciting for the uh, the high CPU core count chips. They are optimizing the engine, so it will take advantage of all the cores in your CPU. All so if you cores. do have an like, i9 Extreme, which hey, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe hook me up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have an i9 Extreme, it, it will be able to take advantage of all those cores. So that is uh, that's great. As an enthusiast, PC enthusiast myself. I'm very excited about that potential for Destiny 2. I can't wait to run it out maxed with as many frames as possible. Well, fantastic. You guys all have a all chance to cores, take a look at it. Maybe you and I frames. can uh, play later today. That would be great. All yeah, right. It's, it's going to be on the uh, E3 show floor. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Jeffy. you. Appreciate right. it, Doug. Big hand. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. I love that. That experience. Mm, nothing says it like that, right? <laughs> all right. So it's not just about the top eight list titles, but also it's about the broad set of developers we participate with. The independent developers. You can see examples of properties that they've developed. We want to make sure everybody's developing and creating content on the PC to create more and more opportunity to participate in that. We're inspiring these developers through a contest called Level Up. Take a look at the sponsors between Intel, you got uh, Green Man Gaming, Epic, and Razer sponsoring this event. We have real luminaries judging, like Tim Schafer. The w yes, Tim Schafer is going to be judging this contest. The winner will Don't be give announced that man any at money. PAX West in Seattle in September. I encourage you to participate. It's a great event. It's a great opportunity for independent developers. It's a great game designer, but he does not know how to handle money. And why do we care? As a software guy, why do we care? Because we want more and more content out there. We want more opportunities for games for others to participate. We want to discover the next big thing on the PC. We don't know where it's going to come from. So we want lots of people participating on our platform so that the next big thing is built on top of the PC. And you, everybody here, all you gamers, you can participate as well. I'm certain as you're participating in a game, you've thought of something new, unique that you'd like to bring to reality. This is your opportunity to be one of those developers as well, or at least influence one I of those developers. I want a new freelancer game and create that amazing immersive experience. Whether you're a gamer, content creator, or even eSports. Now, speaking of eSports, we had two exciting announcements today in the eSports arena, pun intended. <laughs> With ESL, the first being, we have a landmark deal so with this ESL. So this is a repeat Intel from the Intel conference. Intel is now the global technology provider for eSports for ESL. That's great news for everybody in the gaming community because the latest technology we use for the events, for the studios, the back-end operations, and the streaming capabilities during the event, you'll have the latest technology at those events. Now, the thing I love about sports, and I'm a traditional sports admirer as well, is they have this tradition around these things called a grand slam, whether it's tennis, golf, rugby. They have a grand slam. And there's no reason we can't have that it, it, in eSports, and that's why we're excited with Oculus, ESL, and Intel are sponsoring the Grand Slam event, Intel Grand Slam. And all these leagues getting together, For and the first team to win CSGO? four of the ten events will be the Grand Slam winner. They'll collect their traditional prize, but in addition, they'll get another $1 million bonus for being the Grand Slam winner. One, mi one million dollars. No, you put your... All right. Shake my head. It's not... Ugh. 
I was so excited about the announcement today dollars. around Echo Arena. They've taken this property and now are making it VR multiplayer. Yeah, that's the game they showed earlier, Echo. That so great. They're creating the multiplayer they basically stole VR it from, experience um, and bringing it to life. Ender's Game. In this platform. We're so excited about it at Intel, and we want so many people to start participating with it. We are sponsoring a deal in conjunction with Oculus to make this available with Oculus free of charge for limited time at launch so all of you can play with this game free of charge starting July 20th. And you now can participate, learn, and become an expert in VR gaming. Now, I know when you become an expert, what do you want to do? You want to showcase those skills. Wouldn't it be awesome if you had an opportunity to showcase those skills? That's why we're super excited to work together to create the VR challenge. With Intel, Oculus, and ESL, we're creating the, the VR, VR challenge. challenge. How fast can you put it on and calibrate it? In the VR arena. And everybody's going to compete, and the end of it's going to be in Poland at the Intel Extreme Masters, where the finals will be in 2018. Book your tickets now. It's going to be a crazy event. Now, I know everybody likes a challenge. Everybody's excited about challenges. I'm going to give you a challenge all here today. Just participate in at, game, at Intel Gaming. Follow at Intel Gaming, and you'll have a chance by participating there to win one of three great prizes, one from Oculus, one from Asus, and one from iBuyPower. You'll have a chance to win one of these prizes oh, just by go, participating guys. in this Retreat. challenge. And don't Get yourself dismay, a VR. all those will have Core i7 in the systems. So it's a great opportunity to play, participate, and bring up that challenge. So the future is here now, the future of gaming. You can just feel it growing and growing. You see the immersive capabilities. And why is that happening? Because we have amazing Intel hardware. As a software person, that helps me participate in creating amazing and compelling content and those new immersive experiences we all want to have. So the realm of possibilities are here now. An example of that is VR. So I'm stepping away now. I'm going to go up and look at uh, the Echo platform, Echo Arena, and see how it goes. And I'll be back in a minute. So, Sean. Thank you, Where are you at, Day 9? It was a pleasure to have you. Thanks for all the great announcements. And of course, thanks again to Intel for sponsoring this event. Keep in mind, if you look at the time, we're not even halfway done yet. We have all sorts of games still yet to be announced. So let's go ahead and look at what's to come. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Coming up, Brendan Green joins us to talk about the future of his smash hit, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And it's coming to Xbox. Play Entertainment. Oh, Clay does good work. Back to you, Sean. Should be yeah, I'm down for that clay game, whatever it is. Time to take a look at an upcoming game up in the mezzanine with Sonya. How's it going, Sonya? Thank you, Sean. So as a Firefox, this is a game that pulls on my heartstrings and does not let go. And I just want to hear more about it. And luckily, I've got the perfect person to talk to today. I am joined by Felix Kramer the, on the game formerly known as... Uh, secret legend, but you've got some special announcements. I saw some secretive tweets from the Dicey Twitter account. You did. Do you definitely. want to talk about that? Well, you're exactly right. We were known as Secret Legend, but today we're announcing our new name, Tunic. So you can head to tunicgame.com to find out more about that. What and is we're announcing this tunic? that we're pairing with publisher Finji, who you may know from their incredible work on Night in the Woods and Overland. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I want to tell you, it wasn't just the fox that sold me on this game. I love the beautiful, charming girl graphics and honestly I just want to see more of it. Can we check out the trailer? Let's do it. Is this the one they showed at Microsoft? Uh, let's see here. Don't chop down the trees. I'm trying to rebuild this world, Fox. What's the matter with you? Yeah, kill them ghost blob things. So it's kind of like a top-down Zelda-esque game a little bit. Oh, now we 
you have a giant robot thing. Okay. That looked interesting. Your mics are off. We can't hear you. Thank you, Sonya. Now, <laughs> our next title that we'll be talking about is honestly a huge surprise hit, having just surpassed three million sales. You may recognize it as one of the three most played and broadcasted games on Twitch right now. It's Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and I'm literally next to Player Unknown right now. Brendan Green, welcome. Thank you. He should just have a mask on his face. <laughs> we can't see who he really is. Yeah. Thank you. I gotta say, it has been amazing to see the runaway success of your game. What's it been like? Yeah, it's been pretty oh, crazy, been this nice. game. I mean, really, the reaction we've got from players and content creators has been tremendous. And I want to say thank you to everyone for that. Uh, it's been great. And thank you for the experiences, both of the joy of winning and the, well, I guess the joy of a bullet flying through my head out of nowhere, and I'll yeah. never know why. You've got to learn to love Right now on Twitch, this it. game is number three. <laughs> well, I understand that even though a lot of people uh, treat the game almost as a full release right now, yeah. it's still technically not released yet, and there's a whole lot more to come. Talk to us a little bit about And it's also super buggy. Store. So we have, uh, we're, our focus at the moment is to sort of stabilize the game, get the servers up to spec, but also we have... Uh, you know, 2D, 3D replays planned for in-game replays. Uh, we have new weapons coming every month. Uh, oh. <laughs> so yeah, no, but our current focus is really just oh, get the game competitive. They're adding parkour so climbing, thank God. Are, are no longer the most impossible object in the game. You can right. climb yes. over them. Yeah, yeah. So our content program, programmer Marek, he's done a really great job getting this, is this one of the main really dynamic. issues so with this game right now is front of, you'll jump oh, vaulting really? and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so in terms of jumping yes. and vaulting, is it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vaulting. Is it is it sort of when you say that it's, it's a really nice animation? Mean that the taller the obstacle, the more difficult it is to climb over. Yeah, exactly. And it has it. different animations. Are you actually roll out the windows? That is awesome. Climbing. Now oh. we also have weather. So one of my favorite aspects, of course, is the rain map in the game. Walk me through what we're seeing here. So this is our new. Bring weather a snow map, please. Let us have a snow day. map. Um, our rain so we can track footprints. As well. Do you have any um, idea how amazing that would be? Sunset coming in. So. This really, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's, That's it's beautiful. quite beautiful. Yeah. And what, what is the impact on gameplay of these types of things with weather? It just changed dynamic. Oh, so this is... Oh, a new gun. Yes. This is the OTS uh, Groza. It's a 7.62 bullpup. Super powerful, crate only. Uh, crate yeah, only. Is it, is it a short range, long range? Where's medium to medium, short to medium, it's going to be a beast. It's going to be super powerful. Yeah. And then long range, it'll work as well. And I remember before you came on the show, I, I asked, why did you put that gun in? And I think your answer was... It just looks cool. It it's, looks cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like we wanted to add a bullpup and we wanted to add something else to the 7.62 class. And this is a Spetsnaz weapon. It's, yeah, it just looks great. It looks cool. A good as reason as any, honestly. I want to come back to the weather effects. Obviously, they look beautiful. What are some of the impacts that you've seen on the gameplay with the new weather effects? Well, it's just going to change Rain the way makes you sound. play. So it's not Muffles necessarily going to be, you're going to be sniping all the time. You know, with the foggy weather, you're going to have to choose a more kind of CBQ type uh, play style. But it's just, again, to give you a bit of variety and make every game kind of different. You've talked a little bit about what we've seen in the video, but talk to me about long term. What's far down the line for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? So again, uh, we want to finish out the, the, the platform and make it a good platform for all kind right. of game modes. You know, we will have modding down the line as well. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, again, it's just creating a stable platform. That's our yeah. aim here. I understand that you're also working on new maps. Yeah, so we have two new maps coming, uh, one based in Peru, a desert map with uh, sort of ruined cities, uh, with sandstorms and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, and then this other one in the Adriatic, so it has even a, a ruined cosmodrome in the center of the map with like snowfall, and it's, oh, yeah, it's, I'm excited. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I know that you've been super though. involved with the community of regular players. What's in store for those people playing the game right now? So as I said, we have our custom games. Um, we have the 3D replays, which I'm really excited about because it allows you to watch your match back in the engine with a free cam and slow motion and stuff which like that. Which is great that. for so content creators. Exactly, yeah. right? So you can content just... Content creators, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when and I and die, it, I'd really like to <laughs> know just give you where the person create, was like, that shot me and how they, like how they did it. Yeah. They're really the last useful. thing I want to bring up, because you were mentioning this a lot before you came on, you have all sorts of stability and performance fixes incoming. Yeah, so like our focus this month is on our server performance and really getting that stable because at the moment the servers aren't 
performing the best they could. Uh, but you know, so <laughs> last yeah. month our team's focus was on client performance, and we improved that yeah. broadly for a lot of people. And this month it's on server, so they've already found a lot of things to to fix, and I'm excited. That's great. I'm sure players will completely stop blaming anything on the game at that point. Right. They yeah. will accept responsibility <laughs> for those losses then. <laughs> Well, to player unknown himself, Brendan, thank you so much for some coming of the out. bullet issues that I have personally Enjoy. seen in this game are mind blowing. They got to fix that stuff. As we get ourselves set up for the no the next game, we're going to head to the mezzanine with Sonia for a little bit of a giveaway. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Sean is pretty cool, right? Uh, but you know what's a little bit cooler? A free PC. We're going to be giving away a badass PC from our friends at Intel. This bad boy is going to be rocking an i7 7700K processor. There's a lot of 7s in there, and it's going to be running a NVIDIA GTX 1080. Let me see if it's I can... more than $2,500. I'll grab that link here so real quick and throw it into chat. Win, head over to PCGamingShow.com slash giveaway and put Hold in on, your everybody. information. Good luck, and back to you, Sean. Thank you, Sonya. And I am pretty cool, right? No. Jesus, thanks, Audio. Oh, oh, oh wow, they're, uh... <laughs> well, hold on. I, was gonna, I, think, I think their website just crashed. I didn't crashed. realize you could pinpoint the exact time and date a career died. But we still have all sorts of great stuff in store for you. Our next guest you may recognize from Yeah, PC their Gaming website has basically just got Tripwire itself crashed because of that link. To talk about. And I'm joined by creative director Bill Monk. Pleasure to have you, Bill. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Good to have you yeah, back. Yeah, I can't, I can't bring it up. As yeah. always. All right. You guys have been busy. Congratulations on the recent release of Rising Storm 2. Yeah, absolutely. It's a realism FPS. We just released it two weeks ago, and the fan reaction's been really positive. Really happy about that. And we want to thank everyone who was part of the beta phases that helped shape the game in a real positive way. And uh, be sure to check out the Trello boards, see what we're up to. And we're actually uh, already really busy working on some new content. So stay tuned. That's amazing. I mean, I know so many people know you from Killing Floor 2, but especially this year, there's so much to talk about. I mean, yep. last year you announced Killing Floor, Incursion, the VR Killing Floor. How's that been going? Oh, that's been going awesome. You know, uh, Incursion's one of the uh, second phase, uh, you know, game, or second wave games uh, to come out for VR, and we've learned a lot. And we're really, really excited. We think we have uh, one of the best uh, VR products that's going to come out later this year. It's scary as hell. Uh, you can play it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could answer. Kill the zombies. And, uh, and uh, we're really excited to release it. So stay tuned on that. That's awesome. Now, the big thing I know you wanted to talk about today was a little bit of content coming down the line for your big game, Killing Floor 2. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we released uh, Killing Floor 1, I've heard that, that really Killing Floor is actually a pretty good game, but events. I've never right, played it. Right. And when we released Killing Floor 2, people were always clamoring and asking, you know, well, when are you guys going to do that for Killing Floor 2? Reasonable enough. Well, we're super happy to announce the Summer Sideshow coming out this year. Well, I'm eager to show everyone this footage. This trailer makes me laugh every time. Let's go ahead and take a look at Killing Floor 2's Summer Sideshow. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Tragic Kingdom Amusement Park. Come on down and play Find Mini Dookie, Feed the Pound, Dunk the Float, and Pop the... What? Was that a real head? Trade for festive clown makeup, colorful hats, and dozens of other items. Carnival rewards are only available for a limited time. See the adorable pinhead and marvel at the mighty strong pound. Oh, what is wrong with him? Hear the bearded beauty, the siren from Fiji. I think I'm gonna be sick. Back by popular demand. Come see Pukey the Clown and the Monkey Man. Why does the monkey have a chainsaw? Find romance in the tunnel of love. Swing on the queen of chains. Look at them. Ow! Scream on Clown Mountain. Oh, but that's not safe. See the death-defying fire stunts of Dr. Infernum's pyrotechnic emporium! Oh, is he actually on fire? Why is that person on fire? Earn new achievements and try out the new HD-12 shotgun and tactical lever-action rifle! Why do you need a shotgun at a carnival? I don't care, it's unlockable! You Why don't the need a shotgun at a carnival! Why hazmat suits? No, no, I'm done! This is a horror show! I'm getting out of here! If you can hear this, run! Warning. News and outbreaks and variants and behavior detected. Be alert for new challenges, modes, and threats in the weekly outbreaks. 
I mean, I know it's a horror theme, but there's some great humor in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, seasonal events are definitely the most fun to work on. I mean, it's yeah. just, we can just go crazy and we go goofy. You know, we got clowns. You got the monkey clowns, that bangs the cymbal with a chainsaw with chainsaws, instead. Midgets on stilts, bearded <laughs> ladies. You know, we got it all. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what is the gameplay? What's some of the stuff that people can experience in the summer sideshow? So it's a limited time event. It's only going right. to last for one month. Uh, so all this crazy stuff you're seeing here, it's one month. Yeah. Uh, and there's uh, over 50 cosmetic items that people can gain from playing it totally free. Uh, all the Zeds have been replaced. All the voices have been redone. Uh, we also have uh, mini games that are you know, thrown out throughout the yeah, map. Yeah, I saw the carnival games right at the start of the trailer. Yep. We've also got two new weapons that we're introducing. And uh, we also have this other mode that we're really excited about. It's the weekly outbreak Yeah, I saw mode. the weekly outbreak at the end of the trailer. What's the weekly outbreak about? So uh, each week, a uh, new gameplay mode comes out with uh -huh. new challenges for the player. Uh, we have one, it's starting out with a cranium cracker, and that's a headshot only mode. And so no have, damage unless it's headshot. Yeah, exactly. And then we have another one called Tiny Terror, where every time you shoot a Zed, they actually shrink and become like little like midget Zeds, which is really crazy. And whenever the players <laughs> get hit, they shrink too. Oh, really? So, I mean, that's just two of them. We have eight total, and it's over two months worth of uh, content. And if they're really hard to beat, but if you beat it, you get really cool, like, precious items and stuff like that. So, of course, I have to ask, when can people play it? Uh, actually, you can play it tomorrow. And it's uh, free on Steam all week. Easy. Yep. <laughs> well, so we talked no about that. I guess somebody it. finally did it. Well, I mean, what if people are here you at can E3? Play it oh, right well, they can, yeah, they can play here, too. Oh, yeah, boy, tomorrow. that was set up on my part. <laughs> right. Yeah, where, whereabouts is it at on the E3 floor? Uh, that's at the PC Gamer Show. Oh, that's booth, right. It's yep. at the PC Gaming Show booth. We have our own booth here at E3. Yes. Oh, I'm glad that two of you are yep. very excited to hear that. <laughs> The, the first of many, right? This is going to yes. become a tradition. Indubitably. Yeah. I'm not in charge of the buzz. So yes, yes, of course. Well, I want to say, Bill, thank you so much for coming out. Congrats Absolutely. on all the projects and the progress. Bill Monk from Tripwire Thanks, Interactive. Man. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Let's head back up to the mezzanine for a little bit of social with Sonia. This year's PC Gaming Show is being broadcast on more platforms than ever before. We are on Steam, we are on Facebook and Twitch and Mixer. We are all over the place. This is awesome. And what guys, if you are a Mixer, you got to sweet talk the to sweet talk the mods a little bit. Be kind of nice to them because they're going to be giving away games throughout the entire show. Unfortunately, no free games for day nine. Uh, but uh, he sorry. doesn't need them. Back to you, Sean. I'll happily buy them. Yay, video games. Now, if any of you got a I chance to see the conferences high. leading up to today, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. In particular, Microsoft has had a whole slew of games people are pumped for, including some that are going to be at this show, starting with the first ever incarnation of Forza Motorsport coming straight to PC. It's Forza Motorsport 7. Joining me to talk about it is well, the creative wait, director of Forza Motorsport from Turn 10, seven? Bill Giese. Come here, Bill. How's it going? Yeah, Bill, congratulations. Thank you. The announcement yesterday must have been really exciting for you guys. Huge announcements. Uh, we revealed a car to the world. Uh, Not an in-game car, a no, car. No, an actual car. That's normally Is it like Windows 10 only, though? Like That's the question. In, in Paris. I'm yeah. guessing it we probably is. We revealed a car here at E3, the Porsche 911 GT2 RS to the world yesterday. It was awesome. You know, I've gotten the chance to play the previous Forza Motorsport games, and they always struck me as a racing game not focused on being cartoonish or you know, strapping guns to the car. It's about hyper-realistic racing. Uh, Forza Motorsport is about precision, it's about competition, and we've rebuilt Forza Motorsport 7 from the ground up mm -hmm. to really recreate that feeling of driving a car at peak. Uh, the cars, we have over 700 cars. Every single one of them, they're going to rattle and shake. It's going to scare the crap out of you. What are some of the things that you've done to bring that experience to PC? Well, going to PC has been awesome. Uh, not only will it have uh, mouse and keyboard support, but with multi-USB, we have Why every would you drive with a mouse and wheel keyboard? on the market. Um, and it's been exciting for the team. That's a lot of USB it's a lot devices. Of wheels, let me tell you. And we've been testing that. Last week alone, we, we brought in any USB device we had, and we played on a Guitar Hero guitar and a, a DDR <laughs> pad. Now, you're not going to do that, you're obviously. You're going to play my Forza. That's not, how really that's not, racing works. That's not the hyper-realistic part. But uh, whatever you have in your closet, plug it in. You're ready to go. 
Now, what about for low-end PCs? There's obviously a lot of people who are on budget devices. I mean, what about for them? What's the optimization been like? Well, it's been great. Going to the high end of 4K, unlock frame rate, 21 by 9. But we've yeah. also lowered our min spec as well to include i5. And no matter where you play, it looks and plays great. And speaking of looking and playing great, you're here at E3, and I understand you have some out-of-control rigs that people can actually play the games on. Absolutely. Come by the show. We've got two hydraulic rigs uh, in 4K on Ultra 4K hydraulic PCs. Rigs? You didn't yeah, tell yeah, me hydraulics. Yeah, We're going to lift it up in the, the air. Bag, uh, and come on, check it out. It looks awesome. Well, awesome. Bill, thanks so much Thank for you. sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm incredibly excited. Of all the stuff Microsoft's doing, you just got the chance to look at Forza. And now coming onto the stage, I am replacing Bill with Ted Timmons. He's the PC design lead at Rare to talk about Sea of Thieves. Oh, Come on out, all right. Ted. Hi, Shell. Ted Timmons. Thanks for having me. Welcome. It's a pleasure. So, Ted, talk to me a little bit about what is Sea of Thieves. Yeah, so we feel like we've made the pirate game you've always wanted when you think about sailing around the open seas, you and your crew of, uh, of crewmates. Uh, basically, it's Pirates of the Caribbean meets meet, meet the Goonies. What are some of the things that you're showcasing here at E3 in the game? Yeah, so for anyone who didn't see the briefing yesterday, uh, we showed off great new features like riddle map storms and firing yourself out of cannons. <laughs> we still need <laughs> to know a lot more about this time. game. Yeah, pretty known. <laughs> now, I had to ask the same question to Forza yeah. Motorsport. What are yeah. some of the things, some of the features that you've added in to focus on the PC experience. Yeah, so we've got things like 4K, unlock frame rates, or everything you expect, but we've also bought our gameplay footage in 21 by 9 as well, my personal favorite. Your, oh, your favorite resolution. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what? The For this game, I don't yeah, care about your 4K nine, 16 nonsense. By nine as well, probably. <laughs> I need to know, like, more about the mechanics of so, the game. Tell me a little bit more about the PC version. Obviously, it's probably a challenge to try to develop for two different devices at once. Yeah, so we decided to change our approach to the game. We're actually building yeah. both versions in parallel because we felt that's how we deliver the same game on the same day. So it's not a port from one device to the other. Correct, yeah. We, we felt that was really important. It's just like, to is there a leveling system? From, from is, the there a, is there a progression system? system. Yeah. We know awesome. there's loot, well, but I know are a whole there lot of gear slots? Are to how does all that work? It. Is there an official release date or an opportunity for them to play it? Yeah, so becoming what to happens to your ship when you log out? But right now we have a technical alpha. You're welcome to come sign up. We have thousands What's the single of PC player players experience playing already. Like? So yeah, come join us. Seeathieves.com. Once again, Ted Timmons. Awesome. Thank you very from much. Rare. Thank you, Cheers, guys. Too many questions. Seeathieves.com. Now, this next title is one I'm personally very, very excited about, given the fact that when I took one look at the trailer, the striking visual style just grabbed me. It's an evolution of cyberpunk, a game called The Last Night. Here to talk about it is the I think creative I've heard of this. director at Odd Tales. Join me in welcoming Tim Soray. Which, which one is this? I've, I've heard that name last night. Hello, Hello Tim. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Let's ask the obvious question, what is The Last Night? The Last Night is what we call a cinematic platformer, which means it's not a game like Mario where you have to jump from platform to platform, yeah. but you know, it's more story-driven. It's more reminiscent of old classics like Another World, Flashback, Oddworld even. Oddworld, I was going to say, reminded me quite a bit about it. And I saw that you guys had the big announcement reveal at Microsoft yesterday. I mean, that oh, trailer this was such one. a hit. It okay. blew up. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, we are obviously super happy with the trailer. This is the one that mixed like... Clear. Um, now, of course, 16 bit and like normal graphics, progress. I think, um, right? You know, I am embarrassed by some tweets I made in the past. Um, or 8 bit, whichever it is. I want to apologize for those. Uh, they do not in any way represent who I am today or what the last night will be about. Well, let's talk it's about actually what really the game cool options is menu. about. I know that the setting of the last night is super important to the character of the game. Tell me, where <laughs> are we right now? I want you to imagine a world where. Machines are surpassing us in every possible way, you know? Right. So not only physically, but also intellectually, emotionally, even creatively. So in a sense, like, any job that you could possibly yeah, imagine... Yeah, pixel AR art's maybe a better description. Absolutely. Right. Including being a host for a PC gaming show. Including that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine, thank you, this one person who was also excited about the booth. Now, um, in terms of this world, this must give a kind of sense of existential crisis to all the inhabitants. Yeah, um, like the way I can... What, what, what yeah. is it like to be a person in this world? So, you know, in a world where you're not valuable anymore in production... Yeah. You drink um, heavily. The only thing you can really do is to consume endlessly, right? right. So what we're trying to, to, to see with this game is how do you define yourself? 
you know, when you don't have anything to create or to strive for. Yeah, and I can see, you know, obviously there's the futuristic lighting and the visuals, but there's also that sort of drab, dreary tone. This art style is amazing. I mean, all of these assets are in 2D, but it has so many modern effects. How did you even think of this? So it all comes down to my background in VFX and uh, advertising, basically. So I wanted to, you know, uh, explore what I could do with 2D and pixel art yeah. and just augment that and enrich it with like modern techniques of lighting and compositing. Right. You know, and, and we've talked a little bit about where we are, about the art style. Who are you? Who do you play as in The Last Night? Yeah, so the character you get to play is a young uh, idealist, I would say. Yeah. And because of a childhood accident, he cannot enjoy the same gamified, augmented life than everybody else. Right. So uh, because of that, you know, he wants to change the world. And on you want to have way, like an impact and a meaning. Uh, absolutely. So on his way to do that, he's going to meet some questionable, questionable characters you have to trust or not on your way. What about the gameplay? What are the things that if I'm the player, what do I do in the last night? So we took inspiration from some classic genre like point and click and adventure games. Yeah. But so you get um, you know, to solve puzzles and uh, dialogues, of course. But we added a real time component to it. Real time in, in what sort of sense? What makes it a real time puzzle? So it means that you know, while you are busy um, breaking in an apartment, for instance, all the <laughs> simulation is still happening around you. So police come around, you know, and you have to be careful about that. So in a sense, like if I tried to break into the apartment at night, the police might be on patrol at that time. But if I came in the morning, there might be no police. Yes. But the resident might be home. Absolutely, yeah. So um, that means that you know. If you see the police coming around the corner, you better you know, just hide. Uh, I've seen one of those sense. Or maybe draw your gun. You also mentioned that the structure of the game is in one night after the other. What's that like? Yeah, so the game is structured around several nights. So you know, it spans on several nights, and they are all interconnected, which means that what you see. tell people uh, on the very first night, you know, and what you do also is all remember. So if I'm so. just in a conversation, just walk away in the middle of it? Yeah, they will remember it. They'll remember, like two days later, yeah, they'll absolutely. be angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. That's fast. That must add a huge amount of replayability since the world is just changing based yeah, upon Yeah, we're your taking inputs. a lot of pleasure yeah, to hide a lot of stuff in the city, and we hope the community will have fun to figure out and get that out uh, collectively. So, yeah. Well, again, I love the art style. I love these story driven adventure games. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, Sean. I'm Thank looking you. forward to it. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. That looks interesting. Once again, that's oddtales.net for more information about The Last Night. Now, this next game surprised me, I'm sure it will surprise you, because of its style. It's from the makers of Arma, the realistic military simulator, and DayZ, the zombie survival game. This one has a much more playful tone, though. Let's look at the next title from Bohemia Interactive. Peggy. It was the mother of all storms. But somehow I just knew everything was gonna be... Are we seeing Sea of Thieves again? Well, Ow, stupid being crab. stranded on a desert island is a lot of fun. You get to meet new friends. You get in shape. This is going to be Daisy, the pirate version. And you learn how to craft. And because it's your land, it won't take long before you call that place. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Adventures of Monkey Island. And that's just the beginning, because here, you can do anything. So can you build anything you want, like in Minecraft? I don't know about this game, it's it's trying to do way too much. Islands. Explore your creativity. And Visit that's also not a very good name. Com. I think that's gonna be a hard pass. Here to join me to talk about Islands is the creative director from Bohemia Interactive. It's Alish Ulm. Welcome, Alish. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. What kind of game is Islands? 
Okay, so Islands is a sandbox Islands. game about uh, survival and exploration, but at the same time, in Islands, you can create your own games, your own adventures, just like the ones we've shown in the video. Yeah. Actually, Islands stands for your lands, lands that you create where you this make This land rules. is my land. And it, it's this almost land. like a, a sandbox game, not where you're necessarily building a structure, but you're trying to build an experience. Yes, exactly. And I have to ask, given the fact that the style of it contrasts so sharply with Arma and Daisy, what is it about Islands that still makes it a Bohemia game? Yeah, we, we get uh, this a lot, but actually beneath the surface, there are still the core values that make up a Bohemia game. Yeah. It's still about exploration yeah, and helicopter finding jetpack. out how things work. Let's about do it. About creativity and imagination. And just like Arma or Daisy, we're trying to create a platform to connect players with each the other world. Yeah. when they play online or Not when the they first create game something to try this. new and share it with uh, the community. And I know that modding is a legendary part of yes. Bohemia's history. What are some of the lessons that you've learned from Arma, learned from Daisy, and brought to modding in Islands? Well, we have our own editor. It's, it's not a standalone application. It's a part of the game. Oh, really? I mean, I'd assume that it was just outside no, like no, all no. other editors. No, we, we would like players to be uh, able to uh, prototype their creations really quickly. Yeah. And so in the editor, the players can obviously create something new, but they can also decide to uh, open and modify existing games, ones that we created or ones that uh, other players made for them. Yeah, well, I mean, we got the chance I will, to see I will say some this. scenarios right. in the initial trailer. Like, those are the ones that you're referring to. I think uh, a yeah. game like this that is fantastic. has a lot I mean, of really a neat bit about ideas. what it is that we're seeing right here on screen. But one uh, well, this is that just, actually comes uh, out random is 100% uh, done, there are bug the free for the most initial, part, there were three, I think one and is like actually successful. I don't think <laughs> it's happened yet. They are trying to get uh, some kind of treasure and. Yeah, they are setting the It's like nobody's really mm -hmm. been able to I mean, pull off the full about, vision of something like this. E3. <laughs> hey, look, it's the treasure. Several have tried. I know you guys are here at E3. What are some of the things that players can get their hands on at this event? Well, we'll be showing uh, some of the games that we created with uh, iOS. Well, I'm game referring editor. to. Uh, but at the same time, we'll person. be showing how mm -hmm. they can uh, use the editor to create those games. That's awesome. And, and I mean, Minecraft I, I doesn't count. There's a way for people to play right now, is that right? And, yeah, and actually, the couple that were mentioned in chat, the those are... Version of the game. It's I'm not counting those. It's available as a part of our Bohemia Incubator program. Mm -hmm. uh, they can find more information on our website. I'm talking Islands. about com. this particular and style. This year we are coming even even like Steam this Alexa. art style awesome. has been remember, tried before. Islands.com with a Y. We're good. You can remember that. So I want to say, Alish, thank you so much for coming out to talk about Islands. It's been a pleasure. And of course... I hope you're as excited as I am to come up with some total nonsense when I sit down to play. Our next world exclusive is going to be up in the mezzanine with Sonia. Thank you, Sean. I am so honored to be a part of this world exclusive reveal from developers Clay. You might recognize, you might recognize their name from games like Don't Starve or yep. Don't Starve Together for lonely folk like myself. And last year at the stuff. PC Gaming Show, they actually revealed their sci-fi colony sim game, Oxygen Not Included. Mm -hmm. And this year, they are back. And they are back with a bang. And I am so excited to reveal their upcoming sci-fi RPG game, it is called Griffland. Griffland. Sci-fi RPG. Some kind of turn based combat. Hmm. Negotiate, she explores, steal, profit. 
I absolutely love clay games and can't wait the chance to try Grifflins. Now this next title is an interesting one because I'm not someone who plays many VR games, but I got a chance to check this one out several months ago and I was immediately hooked. So I can't wait to talk about it with the creative director from Ready at Dawn. It's Rue Virasuria to talk about Lone Echo. Welcome, yes, Rue. Thank it's you for good to me. have you here. Now, Rue. Yeah. I've gotten the chance to play Lone Echo, but a lot of people here maybe haven't seen it or heard of it. Just walk us through what is the game. So the game, uh, the Lone Echo, is a single exp uh, player experience in VR where you play a cybernetic AI on, the, on a mining station in the rings of Saturn. And basically in the game, uh, you're allowed to move basic, uh, you know, in, uh, in zero-G freely. You can interact with everything inside uh, the environment. And also you'll see that uh, you have an NPC that you can uh, you know, interact yeah. with. You can use your hands basically to go everywhere you need to go. This was the thing that was so amazing for me. Yeah. You stand still and then you use your arms to grab onto objects in the environment to push and pull yourself around. And it was really amazing. Yeah, to I want to say that I've seen that this way. before. I've never seen this before. Exactly. I mean, that's basically where the genesis of the project was. We Looks built really the mechanic to build the game. So the mechanic was this idea that came from watching I, I, you know, ISS uh, uh, space station astronauts you know, be, yeah, moving yeah. around. And we just basically made uh, this, this motion that your little allows you holder to, things are to navigate away. using your yeah. hands just like you would use your legs. So it's been a few months since I got the chance to play. What's been happening in terms of the single player? Here you got some fancy new voice actors lined up. Yeah, we did actually. Uh, when we wrote the story for it, uh, we, uh, we act actually had an actor in mind, uh, somebody that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people out there know, Troy Baker. And Troy decided to take on the role for, the, for awesome. the AI. Oh, nice. And of course, Another thing that we get the chance to talk about is yeah. the multiplayer component to Lone Echo called Echo Arena Rue. How does this game work? Uh, basically, it's a, it's a futuristic VR sport where you play, well, 10 people play in two different teams to get a disc inside yeah, each other's Push goals. the asteroid to Earth. Now, you might be a little bit confused as to how exactly that works, but don't worry. We're going to take an even closer look at what the gameplay is like for Echo Arena. All right, so this is the uh, game they showed at Microsoft. It's the um, Ender's Game knockoff thing. Faster. Passes go farther. Strikes. This is a VR game, by the way. Harder. Stakes get higher. And victory. Sweeter. This is zero G. Intel In wants to make Echo this an esport. Oh God! Oh well, there's your problem right there. Jack, cut the panel. The aliens are here. We are up here with Echo Arena in action as some of the Ready at Dawn developers are playing against each other. So, Doug, welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Uh, it's awesome to have you. But listen, before we get into VR, I really wanted you to tell me a little bit more about the Grand Slam event. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I'm a big sports fan. So, tennis, golf, rugby, they have the Grand Slam. Now we have it at eSports. So, with Intel, ESI, and DreamHack, we now have our Grand Slam, which is really exciting. That's awesome. That's exciting. So I'd like to know a little bit more about Intel's involvement with this game. You know, we've been involved working closely with the best VR developers for a long time, and I'm excited to work with Ready at Dawn as they're delivering the next second generation VR game. They've been an ideal partner to enhance that experience. We're in the second generation already? Most performance CPUs like the i7 and i9. Who made that call? That's amazing. So I was really excited to hear about your announcement earlier. Yeah, Ready at Dawn, Intel and Oculus, we announced that Intel is sponsoring a free release of Echo Arena to all Oculus Rift users when it launches on July 20th for a limited time. And this is because we want as many users as possible on this system. We want to ensure that everyone, including these guys behind us, the gamers behind us as you see, 
that they try and experience the future of VR and esports. So speaking of esports, I would really love to hear more about Intel's involvement with esports. Intel has a long history as a leader in esports. We worked with companies like ESL for the Intel Extreme Masters. And we're excited about Echo Arena and the growth of VR esports. We now present and that's why we're expanding Tron, our partnership with ESL and Oculus to launch the VR Challenge League. It kick kicks off in July, and it features Echo Arena and the Unspoken. It is time for discourse. And it gives esports enthusiasts the opportunity to compete in VR at key upcoming events, with the finals happening in Poland in 2018 at the Intel Extreme Masters. Okay, well that sounds kind of awesome. Well, thank you, Doug. I cannot wait to play this game. Uh, it's going to be coming out July 20th, and you can pre-order it right now, and Rift owners can actually try the open beta on June 23rd. So back to you, Sean. Thank you, Sonia. And once again, I got the chance to play Lone Echo, and I want to stress, you just have to play it. The single player experience is especially mind blowing. So once again, that's Lone Echo. Our next guest announced a game two years ago under the title Project Blue Streak, and we now know it as Law Breakers. Here to talk about not we're just gameplay, but again. cold hard dates is the CEO of Bosky Productions himself, Cliff Blazinski. Yeah, let's bring to out the Cliffy stage. B. Now, Cliff, I know that you guys in the past have been doing a lot of alphas and betas. How have those been going? They've been going well. The alpha, it was all right. And then the first beta was good. The second beta was great. Uh, we're doing our final closed beta, June 28th. If you have a key, sign on to Steam, download the latest update. I, I fear the worst for this event, game. That's all I'm saying. Which is a full open beta, June 30th. I Hop think online, they're a little the late the on the bandwagon think. for and this. I, I got to ask what it has been like to have people play the game to give feedback in those betas. How has that shaped the experience? Well, a lot of uh, developers and publishers, they do these kind of bullshit marketing betas. Where they're like, oh, it's our beta, and the game's out next week. I'm like, that's not really the case. You're not going to be able to fix anything. So for our yeah. game, we found that the Romer's shotgun was way too spammy. Overcharge wasn't that exciting, so we sped that up a little bit, and we sped up the characters. We took actual uh, For those who don't know, Lawbreakers is another more than hero just shooter. Changes. I imagine that speeding up like the Overwatch. pace of things creates a pretty different balance dynamic across the board. There are definitely yeah, some you differences. One thing, it's the butterfly effect. It affects yeah. everything but else. But it's still is the kind of that core concept. On no, that's why we need people's feedback. Play the game, see what characters are overpowered, underpowered, and then we'll introduce new characters and reshuffle the deck. And I know that it can't be in beta forever, so Cliff, tell us when it's out. Can I get a drum roll? Uh, audience, go! Do a thing! Da -da 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 so the game da -da 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 is finally da -da 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 dropping on August 8th on PC and PlayStation 4. Oh, that's soon. $29.99, none of that $60 multiplayer only bullshit. <laughs> that's a decent idea. Make it and cheaper if you than Overwatch. didn't see it online, Cliff took a bow. Yes, $29.99. curtsy. <laughs> well, if you haven't gotten the chance to see the game and follow it throughout the recent PC gaming Good call. shows, Good call. let's take a look at some people who got the opportunity to play Lawbreakers, and we'll have them speak for themselves. So you'll see here in a minute that it's it's kind of like a more oh, of a sci-fi. Oh, is intense. Thousands and there's like low gravity and PvP. all kinds of crazy stuff. Primal. It's exhilarating. Full frontal f A million miles an hour. Literally from every angle. I was shaking after the match. Yeah, you, you could like maybe say that it's a combination that between Quake and Overwatch. I'm ready for another one. I'm like, I just Overwatch. need a minute, man. I'm shaking. I'm shaking over here. That's maybe one way to put it. I think the thing people are going to find in this game the most enjoyable is simply how difficult it is. Because there's a pretty impressive skill gap. You can't just sit down and dominate within an hour or two. Practical skill required. Precision aiming, the ridiculously fast movement. Mechanically, it requires a lot of aim, uh, a lot of vision and game sense. It's a Twitch shooter. It's how a Twitch shooter should be. The action is going to press you, and if you don't keep on top of it, you're just going to get blown off the map. I think team comp is definitely a huge thing for this game. As we're flying around in zero gravity, you know, it's kind of a new situation for us. How do you keep up with your tank and protect them and heal them, also protect your healer and peel off them, while DPS is still being affected and they're being supported? It gets crazy very quickly. The gravity is the biggest thing because that adds so much verticality in. You combine the different movement systems of each character, where some characters have teleports and some characters have dashes, this gets really wild and insane. Now, literally anywhere you look is potentially an attack point. I am literally under Now the you map, may have noticed there was a shot back there. When you're in low Whipping gravity, in you can air, actually aim your gun backwards you need and it will actually propel you forward, which is really cool. Jetpack is going to fly at you with 
double swords. You're going to have someone that can just jet up in the sky and all of a sudden. One of their classes is basically There's Emperor Palpatine. He's got force lightning. Seen before. Medic role is actually phenomenal. It was battle medic, they call it. So it's not one of those medics where you have to sit back. It's not even a thankless role anymore because I'm out there slaying, killing with the rest of my team while keeping them alive. Wraith's got a really good one. With the slide and then the jump into zero G, that's great. Getting like through the map that fast is ridiculously fun. I've been using the Vanguard to drift off the side. So I've been coming up behind the enemy. It took like three, four rounds before they caught on. With the gunslinger, uh, he's a very precision character. So just you know, spinning around and popping someone in the head real quick, it just, it feels great. The game is just aggressive. Cheers, love. And this game gives you so much variety of motion. I never felt more tested. It makes you think in a, in a completely different way. The fastest speed I've ever seen in my life. Crazy when you're playing it. Lawbreakers from the makers of Gears of War. Cliffy B. Just as a reminder that... is running an i7-7700K processors, a lot of sevens in there, uh, and an NVIDIA GTX 1080. It's worth more than $2,500. You do not want to miss out. Head over to PCGamingShow.com slash giveaway and put in your information. I think it could run Crisis at max settings. Uh, what do you think, Sean? No computer can run Crisis at max settings. I think it can, Sonya. Not possible. And I also think that it can run our next title. I am a master of transition. Our next game is from Chucklefish, the wonderful folks who helped bring you Stardew Valley okay. and Starbound. Let's take a look at their upcoming game, Wargroove. All right, I'm down. Those are both great games. Kind of has that Stardew look a little bit. Twelve campaigns. Choose your team. It's all turn base. So, is it basically just a big multiplayer turn based game? Kind of like the old Heroes of Might and Magic, maybe? Kinda? Yeah, because they're doing like castle sieges and stuff. Huh. Today, we're not just going to get a chance to talk about the game, but we will be seeing the editor in action, a live demo on stage. I'm joined by Jay Bayless and Doris Karaskotza <laughs> from Chucklefish. Welcome. It's so great to have Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks. Well, I, I want to say right away, the gameplay reminded me quite a bit of Fire Emblem and Advance Wars. Yeah, um, Fire Emblem and Advance Wars are definitely kind of inspiration. Yeah, I never ours, played you know, Fire um, Emblem, so I can't compare Wolverine that. It's a turn-based tactical strategy game. It's a game about starting to build up your resources That's every like a mission DS game, and push forward into your enemy territory and just kind of dominate the map and make the right choices. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of unique kind of gameplay mechanics. So we're right. bringing it into the modern age. We've got online play, uh, mod support, and kind of yeah. content creation as well. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're going to get the chance to look at today. Doris, who's operating the PC right now, tell us what it is we're looking at. So what we're looking at today is the world map of Wargroove, and this is our campaign editor. So these are the tools we use in house to create Wargroove campaigns, and mm -hmm. we're shipping them with the game so players can create their own scenarios. So I've been placing down map markers, and each of those represent a mission, mm -hmm. and then you link them together to create the path through your campaign. And I know that one of the things okay, you wanted that's to talk about was the branching path element. Yes, yeah, so you can have branching path, obviously, and the cool thing with that is every branch can have conditions, so for example, let's say you get a high score in a mission, and that could lead you through a harder path in your campaign. 
or you oh, could yeah. have a, a secret path that triggers based on some event in the mission. Yeah, I'd like exactly. to know a little bit more about... Well, let's hop into one of the missions and get that one started. Sort of and like Jay, your hero walk through progression. What we're taking a look at. So yeah, this is a, a map editor. This is like straight drawing tiles straight level, into the battle screen. Is there skills? Screen. You no, know, it's really simple to use, really understandable immediately. Um, you can just kind of draw those tiles straight in there and drop in the full range of units. Uh, Doris is dropping in a commander right now. What are the commander units about? Talk to me about that. Uh, so the commanders are kind of integral to the strategy of Wargroove. You have this unit that kind of represents like the king and queen in chess at the same time. They have unique abilities and act as your avatar in battle, and they're really powerful, so you can kind of push forward really heavily with them. But there's a lot of risk reward in there as well, because if you actually lose that unit, then you actually lose the game. Oh, that's what you mean by the king comparison. It's, it's both yeah. your power unit and the queen, but your loss condition is the king. Yeah, and um, other tools include you can drop down buildings right now. Uh, we dropped in some HQs. Those are kind of like your base of operations, and to take the opponent's HQ is to win the match. Yeah. But um, on top of like kind of simple and easy to use tools, we've also got more advanced tools. I'm actually a little worried um, now that so the you game the might be a little right too here, basic. You can highlight an area and assign like a scripted encounter or sequence to that. Okay, so you know, if I step into that forest, someone can pop out and attack me. Yeah, you could have bandits jump out and attack you from the woods. And the really cool thing about that is that that actually ties back into the campaign map we saw earlier. So maybe that will trigger a condition. Maybe yeah. after encountering those bandits, your story takes a different turn and you decide to I go see. into the forest to fight more of them and so on. Now, Doris, what is the process to go from this map to a playable game? So it's very simple, like as simple as sharing the map, actually. So you can just share your map. Mm -hmm. And if you want more content, just go online and download map. And everything in just one click, basically. And there it is. So let me actually take a step over to this timer here. It has been three minutes, and we have gotten the chance to design a campaign map, end a mission, and get it playable. That is incredibly fast. Jay, Doris, I want to thank you both so much for coming out to talk about this Show game today. Show us more. Cheers, guys, thanks and thanks for coming. Thank you. For full coverage of every video, announcement, and moment of the PC Gaming Show. Well, we're at about an hour and a half for this conference already. The next game that we get the opportunity to talk about is the sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. It's Middle Earth Shadow of War that has an officially announced release date. Guys, it's October 10th. Here to talk to me about Take it. Take the day off, guys. Michael Take the days off for this one. Creative at Monolith. What is up, Michael? Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for the chair. Hell yeah. Well, I, the chair is a nice break mm. from all that grueling standing. Yeah. And it gives us to do one of the most iconic things in PC gaming, this posture. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Now. You, we've heard about the October 10th release date. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that have been changing and building upon uh, Shadow of Mordor in terms of Shadow of War? I think what we've tried really hard to do, well, it seems pretty obvious, is take the things that were good that worked in the first game, so yeah. combat and the Nemesis system and this world that we created, um, and to build on that but also to take the lessons we learned in the first game. Yeah, and this really game is going to be great. Those. Could be a so game of the like year contender. Really make this into a truly epic fantasy that's uh, kind of up there with if you go and see Return of the King or Lord of sure. the Rings, and really focusing on the story and the characters as well. I mean, you've been talking all throughout about how important story is in Shadow of War. What does that mean in terms of this lady? the work that you're doing? It means um, paying off the epic scale, so having these titanic full-scale battles. It means the stakes of the story, so we're facing the most iconic and powerful mm -hmm. villains, you know, Sauron and the Witch King and the Nazgul. Sauron. And it means having these incredibly memorable and personal characters, so right. allies and enemies that you're working with. And in terms of E3, what are the types of things that you're showcasing here that people can see? Oh, the reason we're really excited for E3 is two things. People being able to get their hands on the game and play it. Um, and also that we're going to be giving demos of the game. But because of the Nemesis system, every single demo we give, we have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> That's awesome. We don't know which orcs or which characters are going to turn up, which stories are going to happen. So You're every single the game time quite a bit. people go and see the demo, they're going to see something new, and so are we. Um, and Gotta be a little that, careful really though, because you can get to the point that, where you see too much. E3, but for anyone who I think I'm almost there. I don't want to see any demos. more of this oh, game. Well. Yeah, and of course you see all the information for how to watch those online throughout the entire duration of E3. 
I know that in a moment we're going to get a chance to delve a little bit more mm -hmm. into those story bits with a unique cinematic based on one of the characters that was in the trailer. Can you introduce her for us, El Tariel? Uh, yeah, so she's one of the new characters we're introducing into the mm -hmm. world and into our story, El Tariel. She's the Blade of Galadriel. So she's essentially an assassin that's been sent to Mordor to hunt down the Nazgul and to hunt down anyone corrupted by a ring of power. And you, as Talion, are running around Mordor wielding a ring of power. So there's a, some yeah. interesting tension <laughs> in that relationship with her. But she's, she's this awesome character. And as well as that, um, she gets her own fully playable campaign in our first oh, major awesome. story DLC as well, which is the Blade of Galactic. Interesting. Well, before we hop into that, I just want to say, Michael, thanks so much for coming on to talk about Shadow of War. We talked about how important story is to Shadow of War, so let's take a little bit of a look at two minutes of the cinematic, Altariel meeting Talion. Don't know if I want to see this or not. Get into spoilers. <sighs> so it is true. You killed me. And yet you live. What is that like? To die and live again? Do you feel pain? Do you suffer? What of the city? Of the Palantir? It sucks. The Nazgul have taken both. It's like that Tom Cruise movie. They belong to the Dark Lord now. Then I have failed. What if you keep fighting? You can recover the ring. Your rings are the cause of all this, Elf Lord. You can see him. I see him. Who are you? I'm the Blade of Galadriel. Since when does Galadriel work with assassins? Great threats make for unlikely alliances. You know this better than most. Now tell me more about this ring. We crafted it to defeat Sauron, but it was lost. The Nazgul will be drawn to the power of the ring. We cannot let it fall into Sauron's hands. The light of Galadriel, give it to us! Stay your hand. My light will protect us, but it will not leave my side. We must move quickly. Try to keep up. Shadow of War. Yep, a looks. huge fan of Shadow of Mordor. I'm really no more I can say. Looks great. Goes in the sequel, and I'm pleased to say we have one final game to announce. It's from Microsoft, and I'm not even allowed to say the name yet. So joining me to talk about said unnamed game is a creative director from Microsoft Studios, Adam Eisgreen. Welcome, Adam. Thank All right. You so much Maybe this for is something new. Something big. Pleasure here. here. Now, Adam, I understand that you've been in games for a long time. I have. Um, I am coming up on my 25th year making video games. So yes, you can actually make a career out of being in games. Um, and you know, I got my start in the DOS days. Remember DOS? Like, oh yeah, dude, I played Zork all and, day. <laughs> so um, I got my start in the DOS days doing mm -hmm. uh, role-playing games, D&D games. Um, but I spent a heck of a lot of time making real-time strategy games. I was at Westwood Studios for years working on the Command & Conquer series. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Earth and Beyond, a whole bunch of great games there. Um, Petroglyph, Universal War, Empire War. So a lot of history on PC, and I'm excited to get back to it. Well, I understand that this title is an homage to those roots, mm. and I'm still not going to tell you what it is, but I know you're curious, so let's head right in to this world-exclusive trailer. Is it a new IP? Or something uh, redone? History's most beloved PC games. Are they gonna do a brand new... Like, Age of Wonder? Age of Empire? A brand new one? 
or, or, or is this a, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a remaster. Ah, bah. Still. They should just go ahead and do a new one. Just give us a new one. Instead of just remastering this. Fully remastered soundtrack. It'll be on PC as well. I, I might give that a shot. We'll see. Adam, Adam, Adam. Age of Empires was the first game I ever saved up my allowance to play as a kid. I'd, oh I'd weed gosh. my grandma's garden all day. She'd give me like $2. And I still stay dedicated. Tell me about Age of Empires, ma'am. Man, you know, nobody has been able to play this game except if they found the CD-ROMs for the last 20 years. And what's a CD-ROM? I know, really. These day and age, like, who even has a drive? <laughs> um, you know, and this has been such a labor of love for us at Microsoft and our development yeah. partner at um, Forgotten Empires to bring back Age of Empires in such a wonderful definitive edition so everyone can experience it. I want to talk about all the stuff we saw in the trailer start to finish. Talk to me about the graphics. Those, those sprites are huh. gorgeous. We have redone every single asset in the original Age of Empires. Every animation, every tile set, every, everything that made Age of Empires great, we have um, carefully and lovingly taken and made even better and better. Because I remember just watching the sprites move around in the original game. It was very blocky oh, and yeah, yeah. stuttery. We've 16 facings now, so those fonts don't jitter. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, ton of work has gone into making the game and the presentation right. amazing. What about audio? Oh, yeah. So we've re-orchestrated and re-recorded mm. the entire soundtrack to the game using an actual symphony this time. Um, it sounds wonderful. The people at the studios are constantly begging us yeah. to get the soundtrack already. <laughs> now, I have to ask, there were some aspects to the gameplay <laughs> back then that were a little janky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have there been any <laughs> updates to the gameplay in that regard? Yes. So not Updated only have we done AI, things like please. Fine Path, which is, of course, always a big thing in RTS games, uh, we've gone in and actually modernized the UI. Um, a lot of people forget that original age didn't even have an idle villagers button. So <laughs> all of that stuff, attack move, all of those things that have, uh, people have come to expect. Control in groups? Yes, control yes. groups. One that is, that is um, nice. Yep. So all, all of that stuff. stuff is all in the game now. So we've taken all of the learnings from the, yeah. the age games that followed and brought it up to those standards. And you know, in, in, speaking of modernization, I saw that it said Xbox Live Multiplayer, mm -hmm. which, uh, as you may or may not know, that is the online matchmaking service that Microsoft yep. uses for PC games. I mean, uh, how are you utilizing that? Oh, well, we've completely redone how lobbies work and how games and matching works. You know, we have our friend uh -huh. system, of course. It's built into Xbox Live. So players should have a really amazing experience. We also have a yep. web portal. So they can go now and I'm wondering track if it's going to be a Windows 10 only thing. Results awesome. against all the other players. So it should be a really wonderful experience to play. And what about the beta that we saw at the end of that video? Yes, so the um, game will be out later this year, but you can go right yeah. now to ageofempires.com and sign up for our multiplayer beta. Um, you know, RTS games are really, you know, our multiplayer is so important. And we want to make sure that this definitive edition of Age is the absolute best we can make it. Right. So, you know, multiplayer, please come sign, play with us, make the game great. You asked me before we hopped on that you wanted to say one more special bit, <laughs> a little bit of a tease. We understand that it's the 20th anniversary of Age of yes. Empires. What is it you wanted to say? So, yes, uh, Age of Empires, the whole franchise will be 20. It's hitting its 20 mark October of this year. Um, you know, and this is the start here at E3 with you, is the start of the celebration of 20 years of Age of Empires. And that party's going to roll. We're going to continue that. So you're going to hear from us again in Cologne, Germany at Gamescom in August. And uh, we're going to be having a really wonderful Age of Empires event there and talking a whole bunch about, I think, stuff you're going to want to hear. I think I'm going to want to hear it. Yes. You I, tease. Mm, going well, to remaster the other say, ones. Adam, thank you so thank much, you so for, much for coming out. Me on. Super you, excited everybody. about Age of Empires. And with that, our slew of announcements comes to an end. Before we depart, let's head back up to the mezzanine with Sonya for one last hello.
Thank you, Sean. I had an amazing time being a part of some awesome game reveals and kicking it with you guys today. If you want any more information on any of the games that you saw today, go to PCGamer.com. If you want to hang out with me and check me out on the internet, at OMG, it's Firefox pretty much everywhere. I had a blast, and for one last time, back to you, Sean. Thank you so much, Sonia. I got to say, it was a blast. I hope you had a great time. Thank you all so much for coming out, all of you who braved LA traffic to be here in the morning, all of you who tuned in online. Thanks to our sponsors, Intel, Microsoft, Bohemia, Tripwire, Psy Games, and Nexon for help making this event possible. It is an absolute pleasure to have your support. And I'd also like to give a shout out to all the developers and the publishers at their recent conferences that have been going on in the last week. We were super excited about the titles there and following them closely because we're gamers at heart. And we hope that you too enjoyed what we had to share with you today. And as crazy as it sounds, E3 starts tomorrow. So we hope that you get the chance to get your hands on some of the titles that were announced in the last week that you're pumped for. From all the folks at PC Gamer and from me, Day9, have a wonderful day and go play some video games. We'll see you next year. All right, there we go. So that was a very solid conference. I would say that that was better than Bethesda, and it was better than EA, but not not a, not as good as Microsoft. I think Microsoft still holds number one right now as we uh, go into the uh, the rest of the day. Let's go ahead and pull up the schedule here real quick. We actually have the Ubisoft coming up here pretty soon, uh, right at about one hour from now. Starting at uh, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern. But just kind of going back to that conference for a second. Some of the notes that I wrote down. I think out of all the games that were announced, uh, Battletech was probably the one that caught my eye the most. You know, we did have a couple of, of repeats in there, like the middle of Earth. Uh, I really don't need to say any more on that. That game is just, it's going to be great. Hopefully, there was quite a few announcements for uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Uh, that game is coming along quite well. I think once they add in sort of the the parkour and jumping and climbing, and they they really need to do a pass on the graphics and stability and and the melee combat in particular. I'm because I'm pretty sure that they said that. They have not done a pass on the melee in that game since they launched it. Uh, we also had an XCOM 2 expansion announcement. That looks pretty good. If I ever get time, I got to go back and, and try and beat that one. Because uh, Enemy Unknown, I beat that one. But the second one, I, got, I, I, I basically rage quit the second one. I think I did that on stream too. Because <laughs> the, the RNG was just... I was so frustrated with it. Uh, a couple other ones. The last night, we saw that again. That looks really solid. Griff Lands looks really good. And uh, War Grove or Groove uh, looks pretty good as well. But yeah, just overall, they went through, they went through what? Probably a good 15, 20 games there in the span of, I guess we're, we're, we're streaming now for two hours, it says. Thank you, Wisebot. Looks like they are actually uh, replaying some of this stuff right now. But sort of any any final words from you guys before we uh, wrap this up? We'll take a quick little break, and then, like I said, we'll we'll be back for uh, Ubisoft, and right at about an hour. Yeah, Rafferty is saying that Grifflands looks really nice. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I do is I, I, I write all these games down and then later I'll, I'll go to Steam and see which ones are actually on Steam at this point. Oh, Battletech was a Kickstarter? Yeah, I think I, I asked about that. But I'm also going to go ahead and restart all of my stuff. So hopefully for Ubisoft, we don't have any issues. 
Uh, as far as drop frames, I did not drop a single frame in the last two hours. So, all the issues are on Twitch's end at the moment. Everything's running good, so that's cool. So, we'll uh, go ahead and throw the schedule up one more time. So, after Ubisoft, we'll have another break, and then we're going to wrap this thing up with Sony. It's going to be really interesting to see if Sony can win it again for about the third or fourth year in a row. The only thing that concerns me about Sony is I feel like we we know way too much of what they're going to show. So a lot of that surprise, which gives them such a high rating, might not be there this year. So I guess we will wait and see. But yeah, PC Gaming Show, I'd say you're in second place right now. So, excellent job from, from that crew. So, let's go ahead and do that, guys. We'll go ahead and end this stream and be back in exactly one hour. So, thank you all so much for watching. I will, I will go ahead and host Twitch as soon as I log off here. So, anybody who wants to keep watching this, uh, this craziness, you'll be able to do so without leaving. So, I'll go ahead and shut her down here. We'll see you guys in one hour. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.